Are you practicing resilience through this time? I'm Ann Margaret with Raise the Vibration with your weekly Sacred Sunday to raise the vibration of your body, mind, and spirit. For this talk, it'll be 15 minutes long, and we'll start with some inspirational quotes, and I'll give you a couple tools about how to navigate this subject matter today. And then we'll finish off by pulling a couple of intuition cards to access the subconscious mind and that wisdom. So let's get started. Uh, so I wanted to start with just a, a couple quotes. We, we're going through a time right now where it feels almost like this constant victimization of having to stay home, having to stay separate from each other, not having our typical creature comforts that we've really grown accustomed to and associate with our normalcy. And because things are so different right now, it can be very upsetting and we can go into self-victimization mode and then we're suffering, right? So how do we get out of this mode? How do we harness our own resilience? And how do we do that not only for ourselves, but for our home, our families? Because if we do have kids at home, those kids are really watching during this time to see how we're handling things. So let's start with a couple quotes. Uh, there is a beautiful quote by Steve Maraboli that says, life doesn't get easier, we just get stronger or more resilient. This is a very profound quote because life is full of challenging disappointments. We usually have this addiction of wanting things to get better or easier or more comfortable or less struggle in life, less pain. But the truth is, is that life will always present things that are unpredictable. Life will always present things that are challenging in our lives. So it's not about it getting easier. Oh, I just wish things could get easier. It's about how we must get stronger and more resilient. I love that quote. The second one is Robert Jordan. It says, and it's this beautiful metaphor of the oak tree. The oak fought the wind and was broken, but the willow bent when it must and it survived. How can we bend more? How can we invite more flexibility into our self-identity of who we are in the face of this epidemic? How we are working in our careers or the things that we are doing at home? We, many of us are now homeschooling our kids. So how can we bend with this and be flexible rather than rigid with our shoulds and our shouldn'ts? This shouldn't be happening. That leader shouldn't be handling things in this way. We can all have our preferences and opinions. I'm not saying that, but how are they serving you or how are they absolutely destroying your peace of mind? Very important to remember. Another one which I, I love is J.K. Rowling, such a beautiful inspiration that says, rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. A lot of us are facing what we feel like is rock bottom right now. We don't have certainty in our jobs. We might not have certainty in our relationships. We might not feel like we have certainty in being in our homes or whatever it is. Rock bottom is sometimes the best gift that we're given in order to build a very strong foundation for this empire of our lives. We have been collectively building on sand, holding as priorities very junk values that are not important, such as getting prestige or at work, getting that position versus that and kind of edging out the other person, prioritizing material possessions, prioritizing money. We know right now that no matter who you are, no matter how much money you have or you don't have, this virus is a real threat for everybody. It doesn't matter what country you live in. It is very, very critical to remember that we must examine our values and what we're holding as priority. So back to resilience, relating to this potential rock bottom, whatever that means for you, as being a solid foundation that you must connect with in order to build a strong empire. The last quote I want to share with you at this point is Dieter Uchdorf. I might not have that pronunciation properly, but I put all of this in the notes as well as aromatherapies that I also recommend around resilience. The quote is this, it's your reaction to adversity 
not adversity itself, that determines how your life's story will develop. How are you being in the face of this adversity? Adversity is a guarantee in our lives. How are you being in the face of it? The old adage, are you making lemonade out of lemons, can also be applied here, okay? I'm gonna tell you a quick story, and it's called the story of disappointing gifts. And a friend of mine, somebody who, who I, I love very dearly, shared with me a mistake that she made. And the mistake was this, that she set up her children in order to evaluate the relationship of their grandparents, love for them, based on the gifts that they receive from them. Don't we do this quite oftentimes? We will relate, we will equivocate somebody's love for us based on what they're doing for us or the gift that they gave us or how they're attending to our needs. And so the sad thing about this that she shared with me is that every time that her kids would open the gifts from the grandparents, they would start crying. They would start suffering because they would see that the gift was not what they wanted. And they thought they interpreted and made it mean that the grandparents did not love them. Now, this is a very, very sticky situation because the story of the disappointing gifts points to our expectations in life and how we equivocate people's value, people's love for us based on these things. Instead of teaching resilience and being able to reframe that the gift was a, a gift of thoughtfulness, they thought of their grandkids and gifted them these gifts. Instead of doing that, it was a setup for disappointment that they didn't get what they wanted. Now, Pope Francis, uh, in his, his address, I think it was a little over a week ago, I mentioned this in the last live too, but here's a different quote that I wanted to share with you. And he talks about how many fathers and mothers and grandparents and teachers are showing that are showing our children now in small everyday gestures how to face up to and navigate a crisis by adjusting their routines and lifting their gaze and fostering prayer. They're teaching their kids now that we must rise up in the face of this adversity and find our own inner strength to interpret it as consciously as we can. This is so critical and it, it parallels the story of the disappointing gifts in the opposite way. So instead of setting yourself up for disappointment and being disappointed when you don't get what you want in your life, it, it we don't want this virus to be happening right now, but if we embrace it and we honor it and we listen to the depth of the wisdom that is encapsulated within it, then we can grow, then we can learn more so from this experience. We can take the lemons we've been given and make the lemonade. We can take this time of social distancing to reflect, to face our own shadow self, the things that we've been avoiding through distraction and reprioritize what we've been holding as important in our lives. The other quote is greedy for profit. This is from Pope Francis as well. He's such an awesome leader, especially right now is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful teachings. Greedy for profit. We let ourselves get caught up in things and be lured away by haste. And he talks about we were not shaken awake by the wars that are happening right now. We weren't shaken awake by the injustices that we see daily across the world, nor do we listen to the cry of the poor and of our ailing planet. It took this virus to make us all press the pause button, step back and say, hold on, what's going on? A lot of us are doing this begrudgingly, but yet there are a lot of us, including so many who did a conscious mass meditation last night across the planet that are recognizing the sacredness and the opportunity of this time. If we were not woken up and awoken by the crises that are every day happening across our planet, now is the time. Now is the time to awaken. 
So these beautiful, beautiful reminders of the quotes that we've been given are so crucial. Remember the story of the disappointing gifts because we all do it. We all set ourselves up to be disappointed by projecting someone's value in your life or projecting their reality on to them rather than listening or consciously interpreting through choosing conscious filters. So I want you right now, before we pull our cards, to think about something in your life that you feel like you've been kicked down by. And across religions, Confucius in Japanese uh, proverbs also say things like, fall down seven times, get up eight. I mean, it's very, very much a human dynamic to feel beaten, to feel knocked down, but it is so crucial of how we get back up. So I want you to think about something in your life where you're lacking resist resilience now. You're not lacking resistance. You're putting up your dukes. You're fighting, fighting, fighting. You are really allowing yourself to go under the wave of disappointment, of victimization, of suffering, and you are forgetting how powerful you are. Got it? You've got that area in your life? Now, what could be the blessing? How could you see this in a different way? To interpret it in a different way, to allow yourself to be empowered by what's happening. What is this adversity in your life giving you an opportunity to do or to be a different way, a different thing than you've done or you've been before. What's the trap, the cyclical trap you catch yourself in? Maybe it's a person in your life that you're always fighting with, you're always annoyed by. How can you take responsibility for your filter? This helps us so much, it helps me so much. How can I take responsibility for the own filter that I'm looking through at them? or listening through to them, how can I change that? This is just the way that they show their love. Or are you trying to buy milk at a hardware store? Check another live for that teaching. What are your expectations? Can you appreciate what it is they are offering? Can we appreciate what it is this virus is offering us right now? This opportunity to reevaluate everything, to come together in different ways to drop the resentments, to drop, to heal the anger, to heal the grief, okay? All right, let's pick our cards. So around resilience, what are the teachings from our unconscious mind? And these are simply subconscious cards. They're intuition cards that help us understand a deeper knowing. And if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, I'm doing sliding scale coaching one-on-one -on -one for you or for couples counseling if you're struggling with your partner at this time or your roommate. That's all in the notes. And then also we have online yoga and personal training classes and workshops, even like partner yoga and partner massage, all sliding scale. Go to our website, raiseavibration.com. Also women, we've got a women's circle coming up. I think it's on April 24th. I don't know. Check the notes. Okay. Let's see what we pulled. Ooh, femme fatale. Let's see what this says. The light attributes are highlights the erotic energy of the feminine, opens your heart when your dependency is rejected. The shadow attributes is the inappropriate use of sensuality and our attachment to money and power. Drum roll, right? There it is. So femme fatale archetype reminds us that we must harness the feminine right now. We must be that center of frequency to attract what it is we want in our lives, to come at a softness of the mother or that feminine energy, and be very aware that we are not trying to use our sexuality to entrap others or our addiction to money and power. Oof, that's a powerful one for today. All right, let's pull a goddess card next. So around resilience. Let's see what this is. And this week, I want you to really focus on your resilience. Be accountable for it and see how things shift for you this week. Ooh, Siege. Siege is a beautiful card. Quiet time. She says, take some time, quiet time, alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. If there were any card that we would pull for this time, this is a great one. All right. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you feel like someone else would 
benefit from this, feel free to share this publicly. And until next time, just remember to keep raising the vibration. Bye, everybody. Love you.